I mean, look, we love these two as friends and it is a massive betrayal. It's massive. It's massive. And also it's an incredibly intense fight. I ended my friendship with Theo because of you. One of the only good things in my life all because of your self-serving manipulation. You have no idea how horrible it's felt to keep this from you. Claudia. <laughs> I mean, the fans are waiting with bated breath. We are so excited. Right off the bat, what would you tell them they are going to get in Bridgerton season two? Well, I mean, everything they loved about season one is still there. But we've got the beef, like the most amazing introduction of a new family, the Sharmas, who are incredible. They're such a rich, vibrant, like interesting family to come into the show. You know, we're so used to our little setup now. I think we're quite familiar with everybody. So it's really nice to have that injection of, of freshness with the Sharmas. And um, Lady Wistaram is still very much at large. She's back. And uh, I don't think that quest is over for Eloise. Um, and then all of the delicious costumes and, and the music, you know, it's, it's back and I, I'm so excited for everybody to see it. I'm so excited. I think fans fell in love with the show and then since then we've fallen in love with you all as a family, like of actors. Mm -hmm. What was it like to be back together again? How much fun did you have this time around, especially once you knew the show had been this huge hit? We were just very grateful to be back with our friends and to have work and to have a job. We're very, very lucky. It just felt like season one again. It just felt like, and when we didn't know what it was gonna be, we didn't know, we were just, on the job and I think it so it very naturally went back to that we just want to do a really good job there was a moment just before I remember just before I, I, I started I was like oh no I think I've forgotten how to do it like I didn't you know I didn't I was nervous that I'd get it wrong like I, I can't Eloise was a fluke or something but no when you're there you want you just want to do a good job and you want the viewers to love it as much as they loved season one if not more perhaps this is not such a wise decision Seemed wise enough when you took half my pin money to escort me here. I will return it. This part of town is not safe for a young lady such as yourself. Take the other half. Keep a watchful eye. No turning back now. So Bridgerton season two for Eloise. We are very much with Eloise on the hunt for Lady mm. Wistadown. Mm. What can you tease about what is to come between these two dear friends as Eloise tries to figure things out? Well, Eloise is going to make Penelope's life very difficult. <laughs> That's what happened. She's at these balls with her. You know, this is where... Penelope picks up the majority of her information, you know, at these tea parties, these social gatherings. <clears throat> and then Eloise is there, just right next to her, blocking They're her. together. Everywhere. And for Eloise, it's brilliant. She's like, oh, amazing. I don't need to, you know, be at these on my own anymore. We can run off together, you know. But Penelope's like, yeah, that's great. <laughs> You're ruining my job. She's like, um, I kind of need to stay. <laughs> I've got things to do, but obviously she can't say anything. And I, yeah, I think you're just going to see Penelope really battle. You're just going to have this battle with what well, obviously because Penelope enjoys Eloise's company. They're best friends, but it's going to make Penelope's life quite a challenge. That's what I think we all be able to see. And their dynamics will shift. We are also ready. going to explore a romance for Eloise. What can you tease about what's to come for that? Where I didn't expect this. Yeah, I didn't expect it either. It's lovely, isn't it? I think. <laughs> What's exciting is, you know, I think what's lovely about the show is there's no right or wrong way to, to experience romance and love mm. as a woman in the show. And I think more, what's more interesting is to watch someone like Eloise have romantic feelings. I think that's exciting to see. But like how does Eloise respond to this sort of scenario? But I think she's found someone that she can have like really good back and forth with. They make fun of each other. They both are exploring different ways of thinking. That's a real attraction. And it's so cute. When did you find out this would be part of her storyline and what was your reaction? Well, when I've got maybe episodes one and two and then was thinking, huh, <laughs> something's going on here. I was so excited. And Callum, who plays Theo, was brilliant. And I, you know, he was so easy to work with. And we had we had a lot of fun on on set together, um, and we'd like found the story as adorable <laughs> as I hope the people at home will as well. Yeah, yeah, I love it because I mean, obviously, we love Bridgerton for the steaminess that season one brought us, but this was really a meeting of the minds with these two, and it was very sweet to see it sort of innocently um, and playfully unfold. Yeah, <clears throat> it's funny. So in the stage directions in Bridgerton, it's really expressive like they're really fun to read 
they'll be like, things are getting steamy AF, you know, like really like it's stuff like that. And then with um, Eloise and Theo, there was just one in capital letters that said nerd swoon. <laughs> And I loved it so much, it felt so accurate. It's Eloise and Theo, they're young and it's cute and it is like a little nerd swoon. They like reading together and stuff. It's really it's adorable. Nerd swoon. Oh, so in the Bridgerton notes, it actually says AF. Okay, I love this. What's, what's like yeah. the dirtiest note you've ever seen in a script? Betsy Beers, who I love, who's with Shondaland. She's an incredible woman. She reads the stage directions in the read threes and there couldn't be a better human being to do it. She's incredible at it. She really gets the pace going. And so you'll just hear her being like, things are getting steamy as fuck. Like, you know, like in the stage right, it's so much fun. She's brilliant. She really keeps the energy up. I love her. I'm so sorry you were right about all of it. I was trying to protect Is you. Is that what you were doing? By writing about me in your latest sheet? By telling the entire world about things I trusted you it with. It was the only way I could convince the Queen it wasn't you. It was the only way I could save you. The only person you were interested in saving was yourself. In the ending, Eloise has learned the identity of Lady Whistledown is her best friend, Penelope. What was your reaction when you first saw that in the script? I think I was really pleased. Okay. I was really, really pleased that they did that. I think it's a very clever thing to do because there's no one <clears throat> you want to find out more is there like it's, the stakes are the highest with Eloise like you want that you want that as a viewer because the whole time you must just be thinking she has no idea I can't believe this like and so I was really pleased that they did this in the script and me and Nicola were like whoa <laughs> I can't believe we're gonna shoot this like this is wild it's not just like a, a screaming match it's really intense because there's so much to unpack there's so much to unpack. It's not just the fact, you know, her being Lady Whistledown alone is enough for Eloise to be like, what? Like, what do you mean? But then the fact that Penelope watched Eloise for an entire season, you know, she saw all of this. She writes about her family. You know, me and Nicola would talk about it and Nicola would be like, I can't believe she's doing this. She's so sweet. She'd always be like, oh no, I can't believe it. Penelope has quite a hard time and obviously it would be very difficult for her to tell Eloise that it's like, by the way, mate, that's me. I'm gonna be using all of your gossip. And I'm gonna be putting on, you know, she wouldn't be able to do that. So I get it. I get why it would be hard. Are you and Nicola quite close? Yeah, we've got a, like a really beautiful working relationship. We very much have the same sort of um, objective on set. Like we really want to do a good job and get it done. And I think that makes it very easy. We just slot into our characters very quickly when we're together on set. I love, I love working with Nicola, I really do. Now Bridgerton picked up for season three. What would you hope season three would focus on for Eloise? Well, I hope that they are able to um, sort out their friendship, you know, as soon as possible. Cause I think I'll find that me and Nicola will be like, when are we gonna be able to be together again? Um, so I think that, and I also, I'd like her to continue to explore like what we see in season two, Eloise really explores different ways of thinking and different groups of people, different parts of society. I'd love to see that expand for her to get more political. What do you think she does knowing the secret in season three? I think she'll be a good friend. That's what I think Eloise will be. I think she'll be a loyal friend and I don't think she'd tell anyone. I don't know what's gonna happen. Like, I mean, they might, she might just go out and be like, it's her. <laughs> but I don't, I don't think she will. I think she'll be furious, but then just be really respectful. I set them aside for you. I thought perhaps you might share your thoughts on them. Could we see, what about for Eloise and Theo in season three? I mean, could you film a, a steamy scene of your own at some point? Well, crikey, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I should warn the family. I should give them a bit of a run up, shouldn't I? I'd be like, mum, listen, it could happen. To be fair though, when my mum watched season one, I think in her head, she was like, okay, this might be Claudia one day. <laughs> We're get seeing ready. a theme. <laughs> yeah. I think what's interesting about their relationship is there is a, they're, they're trying to transcend class as well, which I think is a really amazing thing to explore. I love that he sort of says, he, he, he's like, oh, okay, cool. This, is, we, this isn't working. You remind me of like, other debutantes, I guess you, the idea of being with me is nice, but the reality isn't. It's not. I think that's really interesting to explore. I'd love to see them together again. 
Sister! Oh, I am so pleased you were able to come. As if I would allow dear Augie to miss out on watching <laughs> his mother win this little family tradition. We do see Phoebe come back as Daphne. What was it like to have her return to the world and we get to see her in the Duke's baby? I, she's a, a beautiful actress and I, you know, I, what an amazing person to kick off this show. It's a hard ship to steer. That, that's a big, um, very courageous thing. And she, I think she did it beautifully. And it was lovely to have her back. And it was just normal. Like all of us were such a family. We really are a family, but I, I couldn't have been happier to see her. I love her very much. We didn't get the reggae cameo. That was kind of thrown out, but it, it didn't happen, right? Did I miss it? No. You're not gonna miss that. <laughs> I feel like you wouldn't have missed that, babe. <laughs>